In our last lecture, we learned a little bit about the history of journalism. In Chapter 2 in Tim Harrower's Inside Reporting, we're going to learn how newsrooms work. First, we're going to define news and learn how that definition may change depending on your audience. And then we'll talk about what readers want to read. We'll then see how the news comes together, tour a newsroom, and learn who's who in the newsroom. Finally, we'll look at the newspaper itself and see what specific elements are called and finish up with some tools of the trade. So what is news? News are the stories that are most interesting and most important to readers. Now, editors need to employ what's called news judgment to learn how to select those interesting and important stories and assign them to reporters. And ultimately, editors decide what stories will run. A good news story has at least one, and hopefully multiple, of these seven news values. The first is impact. Does the story matter? How many people does the story impact and how? Next is immediacy. Did the story just happen or did it happen last week, last month or last year? After enough time has passed, it becomes old news and no longer relevant. People typically care about what is happening in their own community more than in other cities, states, or countries. That's the news value of proximity. Now, when a national or international story has a big enough impact to report on, it should be tied to local impact as much as possible. For instance, after an overseas terrorist attack, a journalist could talk to some local residents who used to live in that community. Next is prominence. Does a story involve a well-known public figure or a celebrity? News always seems more interesting when it happens to famous people. Next is novelty. Is the story about something new, odd, or surprising? New York Sun editor Charles Dana was quoted as saying, when a dog bites a man, that's not news. But when a man bites a dog, <laughs> that is news. There's actually even a card game called Man Bites Dog in which players have to use their cards to come up with the most outrageous headlines. Next is conflict. Is the story about a power struggle, a political battle, sports rivalry? Dramatic confrontations of any kind make for good news. And finally, emotions. Does the story make you feel something? Happy, sad, angry? News is the stories that are most interesting and important to readers. Therefore, who your readers are reflects what your news will look like. Take a look at these nine potential stories for a Metro Daily newspaper, with more details about each one found on page 34 of your textbook. Now imagine you are the editor of the Durham Herald Sun. What's news? Storm warnings and flu shots. That can have a large impact and immediacy. The same with tuition hike. County fair, immediacy and novelty. People love pictures of kids and animals, especially of the two together. Now let's look at a community weekly, something like the carry news. Now storm warnings aren't as important as it could be days after the storm passed before the paper prints again. The county fair still has relative immediacy and novelty. Remember what I said about kids and animals? Now the tuition hike and Bolivia bus crash stories are things better covered elsewhere. They don't really fit in with the paper's hyper-local focus. Now a story about Girl Scout cookies is a perfect feel-good community piece that appeals to your emotions and would do very well in a community weekly. Now think about a twice-weekly campus newspaper, focused primarily on campus life. A tuition hike? Page one. That impact is major for every reader. The lottery winner? 
is a graduate student who won $50,000 in the state lotto. Now that's a great story for the campus paper. Jay-Z's gender confirmation surgery? No one's gonna touch an unsubstantiated rumor. Ultimately, what you will run in your newspaper depends on who your readers are and what they want. So how do you know what your readers want to read? You ask. Now there's two student newspapers at NC State where I work. We have a twice weekly general campus newspaper and a bi-weekly African American focused newspaper. Now every few years, the staff conducts focus groups with readers to help gauge their interest. We've asked readers to help shape the focus of the paper. We've asked respondents to actually mark up the paper with what they read stopping when they stopped reading. Now reader surveys can help capture reliable and accurate data as well. They can also be used to determine why people aren't regular readers to your newspaper. Now some news organizations gather feedback in other ways, such as paper sales or website page views, reader response like emails or letters to the editors, and anecdotal feedback that readers give to the newspaper. What every media organization, whether it's print, online, radio, or television has to remember is that readers are in a hurry. They have short attention spans. They wanna feel connected to a story and they want that story to be compelling. And remember that different readers read differently. So there's no one solution that will ultimately fit everyone. Take a look at the Jenny Deadline Ace Reporter comic in your textbook. As with everything else you'll find, it's a pretty good glimpse into the day in the life of a journalist. It starts with hearing something, like a professor suddenly resigning, that sparks a journalist's interest. Now Jenny starts asking questions, calling the professor, talking with his former boss, coworkers, and students. Now as Jenny shows us, it takes more time to gather the facts than to write the actual story. Sometimes sources give you more information than you want or need, and you need to whittle it down to the basics. Remember to not take everything at face value, but instead investigate to determine what's really going on. And the most important thing to remember is if you can't prove it, you can't print it. Jenny couldn't print allegations of sexual harassment, even if it was true, because she didn't have any real evidence to support it. Someone's creepy feelings and rumors aren't facts. Harrower takes us inside the Oregonian newsroom to show us how news comes together. While every newsroom is different, the Oregonian is a great example to learn from. There are four main divisions at a newspaper. The first is editorial, which is the content of the newspaper. These are the people you would typically associate with a newspaper, reporters and editors, copy editors, photographers, and designers. Now on the non-editorial side, you have the advertising department. Those are the folks that sell our sales rep and sell ads for the paper, then the production department. If the paper is printed in-house, these are the ones who run the printing press. And if you print off-site, this is probably your IT department that keeps your computers working. And finally, you have circulation. These are the ones that, that deliver the paper every morning, whether it's to someone's house or to newspaper boxes around town or campus. CopyDesk then sends the edited story to the designer to place it on the page. The designer also places any corresponding photos and other elements within the story. And speaking of photos, photographers get assignments just like reporters, and they shoot images to send to the photo editor. 